Hey everyone, it's George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I hope you're having a nice weekend, nice week, uh, whatever you're listening to this. And uh, I'm just thinking about recently just reading posts and uh, tweets and, you know, Instagram posts and just thinking about how, um, you know, educators are really stressed and rightfully so thinking about all the things that people are trying to juggle right now all the amazing work uh, that's happening in spite of all, um, you know, the obstacles in their way. And I just want to say thank you, but I just also wanted to share, you know, a couple of stories of appreciation and just remind you, um, you know, why the work that you do matters so much. And I think it goes way beyond academics. It goes way beyond grades. It goes on uh, to that legacy that you leave in others and, and really thinking about the impact that you have that you, you, you honestly don't know and that you can't actually measure and how important that is. And when you think of educators, I think about my own experience as one, but I also think about my experience as a kid in school. And I think about my teachers that had a really significant impact on me and how I think about them and still actually connect with them to this day. And you think about sometimes when you're in school, you, you feel kids don't really appreciate you that, you know, you get into the, you know, we have classroom management issues, whatever things that you're dealing with uh, in other space, but then you actually leave your school and a kid sees you in the grocery store and it's like a Beyonce sighting. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened to that kid. And I actually remember one time uh, I was, when I was a principal, I was actually at the grocery store and one of my students, it was a Friday. He's like, Mr. Cross, what are you doing here? And I'm like, buying food, right? Like, <laughs> It's, I actually eat. And we talk for like five or 10 minutes and just, just so starstruck. Right. And this, this kid, uh, I try to make connections with him all the time in school. And, uh, he was an awesome kid, had lots of conversation with him, but it was just something that him seeing me outside of school, which, you know, a lot of kids think about it just, it's like the greatest thing ever. And I remember, um, thinking about, seeing uh that same kid it was i saw him on friday monday morning i came to school and i, I was usually you know obviously there before school opened uh and he was there waiting at the door and he was waiting for me and he came up to me he said mr cross i started the grocery store on friday and i'm like i like i know i was there right and i just always think about how much that interaction, you know, how much that impacts. And I used to think about like my teachers, when I used to see them outside, you, 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 you sometimes don't, you take them for granted. And then you see them in these outside spaces, you realize that they're, you know, like flesh and blood people and um, they have lives and just how much you revere them. Even so sometimes when you feel you don't. And I think that kind of leads me back to thinking about, um, little things I learned that I didn't really understand at the moment and how important they were uh, from my teachers, but I've had a major impact on me today. And when I was in grade 12, I had a coach named Cal Hobbs. Actually, his name's Calvin Hobbs, right? Uh, like the cartoon, but I still call him Coach Hobbs to this day. And he's had a real big impact on me. And I, I think about him a lot. And in fact, we we connect here and there. And I'll tell you, one of the things I love about Coach Hobbs uh, to this day is he, he constantly cheers me on. And I just think, you know, like how we cheer on our kids and, and how powerful that is. And, you know, he wants to see me successful. And I always think about this, I, that every person we deal with was somebody's student and some teachers cheering for them. And sometimes we, you know, have those moments. And I just think about how Coach Hobbs still cheers me on. And I'll tell you, when I first interacted with him, it wasn't the best interaction. And uh, I was a grade 12 kid. He came in, I was, I think it was maybe first or second year of teaching and he was our football coach. And, you know, I was grade 12, cocky kid growing up. And uh, I played football for four years at the high school level. Now I, I played football in a small town. There's no uh, junior varsity or anything like that. There's just one team, right? And I was a pretty big kid. So I played in grade nine, 10, 11, 12. And my thinking at the time was, you know, like I played for four years. I got to be captain in grade 12. Like you played for four years. It's pretty rare 
um, you know, for any person. So I just kind of thought I deserved it. I remember I first met him and we were, we, I met him in a, a locker room and he was there and he was working on some equipment. I can actually visually see that moment to this day. And I introduced myself. Hey, I said, Hey, I'm George, you know, uh, thanks. We're really excited about you being coach and, uh, really just wanted to welcome you here. And he said, Oh, like, thanks. You know, I really appreciate it. And I said, just so you know, like I've actually played, um, played football for four years, uh, for this team. So like, I'm, 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 uh, like it makes sense for me to be captain. And he's like, Oh, really? And this is the first interaction I've had with this gentleman. And, uh, he really didn't say anything to me. He just kind of like smiled and nodded. And then we had practice and I'll tell you, he worked me really hard. He pushed me quite a bit and he, he would challenge me, uh, to his moments. And, you know, he like, say, are, are you the, are the, are you the leader you think you are? Are you the leader you think you are? And I remember him like really pushing me in practice. And since, uh, on the day they were announcing captains, um, he, he made sure that he announced them and there's multiple captains on a football team at the time. He announced me dead last. So he announced five people and I was just sitting there. I'm like, is he not going to announce me? Like, have I not proved anything to him? And I'll tell you that, yes, I did prove something to him then, but he also pulled me aside. He said, you know, I'm really proud of all the work that you did in practice, but just remember that leadership and is not something you're entitled to. You have to earn it. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was like, hey, I'm captain. I don't really care anymore. Like, thanks for this. But then as I grew older, I started looking back and thinking about that impact. Yeah, I mean, and, and those things that resonate with me today and really uh, how important I see things and how I look at how do I work to, you know, or earn the things that I get in life. And it's because of little moments like that. And, you know, I'm sh coach Hobbs is probably not the perfect teacher and I'll definitely was not the perfect student, nor was the perfect teacher, but it's like lessons like that. And, and I can't, and I'll tell you, this sounds weird. I can't remember anything the guy taught me. Like, I, like, I'm not talking like any of the lessons he taught me. I can't remember the academic part of this too, but I can tell you that he had a tremendous impact. And when you think of your legacy as an educator, your legacy spreads beyond any single person because those people impact others and they, you know, impact others. It's exponential and you can never, and like this story I tell about coach Hobbs, I guarantee you he's got thousands of others that people would tell the a very similar story or, or something that he shared that had an impact that you, he'll never hear. And so I think it's important to take those moments and, like I said, your legacy is not in what you do as an educator. It's what the people you serve do because of your work. And Coach Hobbs is a great example. And, and I think about that. And he really influenced me as a teacher and a coach. And I remember coaching basketball uh, later on in, in uh, you know, when I became a teacher. And uh, I was a very competitive coach. And I, I, I'm still a competitive person. And I coach high-level um you know, senior boys basketball. And, you know, like when you coach at that level, the, the goal for most teams, and I would always have this conversation with teams is like, you know, to, to win a championship, whatever that looks like um, at that level. And I'd have these conversations with my students and, or with my team, you know, my team every year. But I also said like, if, if the only goal we have is to win the championship, then, and that's everyone else's goal. A lot of people are going to be disappointed. And so what I hope is that I teach you things beyond that, that truly, if we're going to be successful, um, you'll, you'll learn a lot of lessons beyond winning. Like, of course, we're going to strive, we're going to work hard to do these things. And it, that was something that was really important to me because I know that, uh, that in where I lived, only one team in our area or division would win the championship. So like, to place your success totally based on winning that was not just enough. And I remember one year, and like I said, you know, as a teacher, like lots of things I wish I could have done better, uh, you know, as a coach, a lot of things I wish I could do better. I think that's part of growth, right? We're not perfect at any element and we talk about learning. Uh, but there's one moment that, or there's one instance I really think about and really think about kind of going back to, how much your influence matters. 
I remember I had a, a, a student in my class and I'll just call him Steve. And Steve was in my class, that's not his name. And I'll tell you, he, he didn't really, he was just a really nice kid, just awesome. Uh, but he didn't make a lot of friends and he was kind of quiet, kept to himself. And I could tell in class, he had like kind of like an interesting sense of humor. He had a good personality, but he just didn't connect. And, and I saw that. And uh, he showed up for basketball practice. And I'll tell you, he wasn't a good athlete, like not at all. He was awesome kid. And I could have easily cut him for the team. And so I actually decided, hey, you know what? I would like to keep this kid because I think it could have a huge impact on him. And so I pulled him aside uh, before we talked about, you know, who's going to be on the team. And to be honest, the the team, I coached, everybody made the team, but I wanted to be really clear. I think I actually could have cut one or two people that year, but I decided to keep everybody. And I pulled Stevie aside and I said, you know, uh, honestly, you're not going to play much this year. You're not going to play much on this team. Uh, Your skill's not there, but the goal that I have for you, and I want you to be okay with this, is that you are going to push everybody in practice. You're going to work harder. You're going to make, you know, make it really tough for people on our team uh, when they practice so that they're well prepared when they play the game. But I think it's really important that you're on this team. And I think it'd be really great. But I also want to tell you straight up that you're not going to play a ton. And, you know, this wasn't just my goal. Like we had a, you know, the, the team said like, we want to win. So you make the decisions best on who plays and how much, et cetera, like that. And he said, yeah, I, I, I want to be on this team so bad. And at the beginning, I remember he didn't really connect with the other teammates and we used to like go to trips and, you know, we'd take this van and I'd be driving it at the time. And he would always sit in front of me. And I would talk to him like, Hey, you need to DJ, you know, Stevie's DJing and all these things. And, and I elevated him to others. I made sure that I connected with him, said how awesome he was. And I noticed the team started rallying around him because that's the influence that you have on students. Sometimes we don't see it, but that's the influence that we have. And he didn't play much. And I remember uh, we were winning a game. And I, I threw him in and all the team was so pumped for him to play. And the goal was just to get him to score, just to score anything, right? Now, he wasn't really good at dribbling. He was not that tall, did, couldn't jump that well. And I told the team, I said, get it to Stevie, wherever he is. And I want him, and like, just get it to him. Let's get him a basket. And I remember, uh, I was coaching and this is in front of the entire school and someone passed him and he's probably about eight feet behind the three point line, which is a super hard shot. I just said, shoot it, shoot it. And he had the worst form. He shot the ball from so far away and it just switched Didn't even touch rim and the whole gymnasium just went nuts. Right. And I'll just, I'll never forget it. And they were just going crazy. And they started chanting his name. And uh, we came back. I was so excited. Came back. And, like, he got his basket. So we're, like, good. And so, like, I was super happy for that. And, honestly, I didn't want to take that moment. But he's feeling himself now. And uh, we stopped him on defense, went back. He gets the ball right in the same spot. I'm not saying shoot it because, like, I don't want him to miss because I want him to, like, kind of live in that moment. And he shoots it so far away, swish, again. The gym is going nuts. And I'm thinking, maybe this kid's a lot better than what I thought. And they were like, these are fluke shots. These are shots that we don't want. You don't want, it's like Steph Curry taking. They're so far away. And it was just amazing. And I remember just how proud the team was of him. I remember how the school got behind him. And I just saw him grow and I just was really powerful. And it was just amazing to watch. And he barely played, uh, you know, much after that, but he was like a star. He was just a star on the team. And I just saw him grow as a person. And we ended up losing out uh, that year. Didn't, you know, meet our, the goal of, you know, winning the championship. I'm disappointed, right? 
you know, competitive person want the, not just for myself, but you know, something I wanted my team to experience. And so I'm disappointed. And uh, Stevie came up to me and sit on the bench and this, this kid barely played. And he came up to me and he said, you're a good coach. And I just sort of, I lost it, right? Someone didn't play that much, uh, but he saw, he saw the other things I was trying to accomplish. And, you know, I didn't do it all the time. I tried my best, obviously. And I watched him grow up. And I watched him, like, you know, see him do all these incredible things after school. And I'm just, like, so proud. And I watch a lot of the, you know, students that I taught, the people I coached, watch them grow up and how proud I am of seeing that. And I, I just, I, I think it's really important that, I, I don't remember a lot of the things I taught him. I actually can tell you, Steve was a great student. I can't remember what I, I think I taught him math. I can't remember any of the concepts I taught him. Any of those things, I'm not saying those things are important. But when you really look back on your impact as an educator, those and what are, we look back as students, and I think about like Coach Hobbs and Coach Hobbs having an impact on me to grow and then having an opportunity to like help other, you know, people on our team, other students because of coach Hobbs and who is coach Hobbs, coach Hobbs, right? You just see it goes on and on forever. And so I just wanted to remind you about how important the work you do is every day and how it is. And really, we get really stressed with academic success and things like that, but there's so much more to what makes us human than what we get on any tests or the score we get in grade. And that is really the important work of what you do in education. So I just wanted to share those stories with you. I wanted to shout out Coach Hobbs uh, for always cheering me on and thinking about how important uh, teachers have been in my life. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Take care, bye-bye.